Welcome to Think Tech on OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. And I'm Duke Oishi. A great country is entitled to great art, and a great state is entitled to a great symphony. Although we don't have the Honolulu Symphony right now, we do have the Hawaii Youth Symphony, and they're the greatest. In our show tonight, we'll meet their leadership, conductors, teachers, and kid members. We'll find out what makes them tick, the contribution they make to our community, and we'll hear them play. For background, we met with Executive Director Selena Ching, Music Director Henry Miyamura, Vice President Tom Bingham, and musician, mentor, and teacher Cheryl Showhead. Uh, when I talk to the students, we talk about music and uh, absorption of the music. So I always use this example. I said, you're all sponges and you have to um, suck in as much water as you can. And at the constant time, we squeeze out the water and this is what you give to the audience. And this is what's so exciting about um, the um, students. The, the size of the sponge is not what you have originally. It just starts to grow and grow and they just keep absorbing more and more. Um, especially for this up and coming concert, they, they have to actually, um, they started with us, small sponge and they have to go ten, grow 10 times larger for this specific uh, program. Why? And, well, what is it about this program? Well, because it's extremely difficult uh, by professional standard. It, it's even for them will be very difficult because we have uh, actually all of the pieces we're playing, they're five major, major uh, pieces. Normally I take only at the most two or one and then we, I scope it down just so that uh, they have the ability to uh, to do a, a superb job. But in this case, there are five uh, numbers, and each one poses uh, difficulties, ex as especially uh, two of them, one by Bernstein and one the premier uh, performance of uh, Michael Fomai's uh, Li Su. And I think that goes way, way, way beyond any expectation and Mike Fomai, just so you know, is an alumnus of the Hawaii Youth Symphony. So he played under Henry's baton for many years as a um, youth symphony student as well as a University of Hawaii student. Uh, he, when you talk prodigy, is a prodigy. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. He's composed his first piece, I think, starting at age nine, Henry? Nine. Came out with the full symphony at 13. But I think for the Hawaii Youth Symphony, it's not our goal to yes. train students to become professional musicians. It's really to get a larger breath. It's the benefits of music education, a lot of the intrinsic value that you get out of it. That's our main goal. So we're not here to train kids to become professionals or even to go into professional institutes. The loss of the Honolulu Symphony, let's talk about where we actually are. We have no Honolulu Symphony, it is bankrupt. That is a tremendous loss to our organization, and I think Tom alluded to most of the points. We've lost educators, we lost mentors, we've lost role models. I mean, that's all. Without these musicians buzzing around in our town, it is just, it's a tragic hit to the quality of life in this town. Uh, definitely there's a need for an orchestra. You need the orchestra, just like the art academy has to survive. The artists will not be around if there's no art academy. It, it's, it bypasses a need. It should be part of everyone's life. Uh, so Henry, uh, you know, you, you've been with the system a long time. I mean, uh, it's a full career already. Uh, are there other Henrys in the pipeline behind you? Um. <laughs> I think I think um, there's a number of my former students that have yeah. that drive and momentum to, to um, feel the way I f feel about music. And unfortunately, some of them just have retired and they're younger than I am. <laughs> well, I hope there are. I hope there are people following you in the pipeline. But uh, let me ask you this, and I think I already know the answer. But, you know, what, what kind of a career has it been for you? Have you enjoyed it? Oh, yes. If I were to do it again, and would, I'm given another 50 years, I would go right back and do the same thing. I'm on the board of directors. I've been there for four or five years, and right now I'm one of the vice presidents. But I, um, I also bring to the table some musical background and also the background of having had a son in the Youth Symphony for two or three years. Mm -hmm. uh, in my previous life, I was a band director at UH, and I also taught high school for a while and I've since gone into administration at UH. I'm committed to education 
and especially music education. And I knew even before my son joined the Youth Symphony that, that it was a dynamic organization that was doing a lot of good. M music education uh, works for kids in, in so many ways. I mean, classical music has been around for hundreds of years and it, it just doesn't go away. So there's something about classical music that speaks to people. Uh, using that as a vehicle to help kids in, in many aspects of their lives is one of, one of the remarkable things about being able to do music education. When I was teaching in high school, uh, one of the things I really treasured was having the opportunity to see kids from their freshman year all the way through to their senior year. You have to have your individual talents and abilities, but you have to be able to to use those and push those down to be part of a broader group because an ensemble of say 60 cannot sound like 60 individuals. Individuals have to set aside their individuality to be part of a team and be part of something that's that's greater than themselves alone. Because the expectation is that you as a player are going to have to get better every week because we're going to give you music that's going to challenge you. One of the skills of teaching is being able to choose repertoire that you know will challenge the students but that you know they will be able to attain. I have three music degrees and then I came to Hawaii for a one-year position with the symphony and I never left so I've been here playing for 28 years. So I'm a section first violinist. Okay. There are ten of us that are section first violinists and uh, I teach a lot of students to play the violin. I usually start around age four and I have a program at Waiau Elementary School, a public school in Pearl City. And many of the really top players in Youth Symphony came out of that YL program. So how many years does it take a kid to become proficient? Well, there are seven Hawaii Youth Symphonies. I think if, if someone takes private lessons for a year or two, they're ready to play in the first Youth Symphony. So it doesn't take that much training to be able to, to get in on the ground level. And then once they're in, they will see the other kids playing and it will encourage them. And then they'll want to work harder in their private lessons. Do you encourage your students to join the Hawaii Youth Symphony? Oh, absolutely. I am so pleased when my private students decide it's time to join the Youth Symphony. All of mine live in the western part of Oahu, from Aiea to Wahiwa Kapolei. And many of them don't have orchestras in their schools. So the Youth Symphony program fills a gap for them and opens up a whole new world that they have never experienced before. Um, when they do start playing in a youth symphony, in the Hawaii Youth Symphony program, they learn responsibility. Um, the repertoire is often a big stretch for them, so they have to practice extra on their own time. And when they go to rehearsals, they really enjoy working together for a greater whole and contributing, doing their part, just like a sports team. When you see that there are other people just like you who like this kind of music and enjoy doing this, it really is a big boost. So tell me your thoughts about the uh, Hawaii uh, Youth Symphony as an organization in the community. What role does it play on a, on a broader scale? I think the Hawaii Youth Symphony has a very important role in the community. It's an outlet for all the kids who don't have school orchestras, and it's an outlet for the kids who do have school orchestras, but they just love to play so much they want more and more. And it's also a wonderful social opportunity for all these kids to get together with other ones from other schools and they create friendships that last a lifetime. We also spoke with one of the alumni of the orchestra, David Masunaga, and child prodigy now turned composer, Mike Fumai. One of the things about mathematics and, and music is that they have an incredible aesthetic which is not necessarily obvious. Um, they both have they both have at their core pattern. Discovery and epiphany is almost uh, what we live for. It's what we live for in mathematics. It's what we live for in science. It's what we live for in music. To find that that thing that that new spark, which tells you more than what you what you already knew. You know there there are quite a number of mathematicians, professional mathematicians, who are also professional musicians. There are a number of uh, professional musicians who were math majors in college. But now the big question, why, why do you have a sheet of music on the table here in the studio? We have a sheet of music on this table because... Is it that you carry the sheet of music everywhere I you carry always the have it on the table? I carry the sheet of music everywhere and put it 
I always bring it and put it right before interviewers so that they would ask that very question. And indeed they do, don't they? I started playing the oboe when I was 12 years old. And Why at, the oboe? Uh, number one, it's not a clarinet. And, um, and I wanted to play something that was very unusual. Had I known that the band also owned a bassoon, I would probably have been a bassoonist today. At the end of the eighth grade year, uh, my band director from Washington Intermediate School, the legendary Edward Kanaya, approached me and he said, um, listen, I've put in your name for, um, for audition into the Youth Symphony's Junior Orchestra. And I was just thrilled at even the prospect of playing in an orchestra. Playing in an orchestra is something that you just don't have the opportunity for in, in many places, still today. You know, there are lots of schools without orchestras. So I auditioned, I actually did make the audition. All of us uh, were under the tutelage of maestro Harold Higa at the time, who is today considered one of the, one of the, the deans of music education in Hawaii. And then he passed us on to Peter Mesrobian, um, and Peter Mesrobian was the conductor of the Youth Symphony. He's the founder of the whole Youth Symphony movement in Hawaii. The formula still remains the same today. You take incredible masterpieces of music. You combine that with um, an orchestral staff and maestros who are outstanding and who have at their heart the mind of an educator. And then on top of that, you may motivate students to perform at the very, very highest artistic level. And this all has, as its start, um, their experiences in, in the Youth Symphony. Sure. Yeah. So, you know, what, what kind of an experience is it to uh, compose when you're a kid? When I started off writing, my audience was, was my family and I, my friends. I'd play them things that I wrote. And they say, wow, that's very, that's very nice. Wow, you, you actually wrote that. Yeah. yeah, and there comes a time where you need to be proactive and not only show it to your family. And that was, I think, one of the hardest things for me was to show my music to somebody else outside of my comfort zone. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a big step that, that I had to take. And that big step was, was, was showing my music to, uh, to Henry Mee Moore, who I had no idea what he was going to think. He said, why, why don't we sight read it with a, uh, the university orchestra? And I did that. And, you know, it sounded, sounded pretty good. And he was quite impressed. And he asked me to kind of revise it, even give me a chance to perform it. And so that's how my music spread out. How would you describe the music you write? I think I'm still growing as a composer, and I always will be. Um, the music that I, I began with was very, very classical sounding, very romantic in nature. If you can look at some composers like um, Beethoven, Mozart, and then but, but the kind of music that really influenced me was music from film seven years ago. That's, my music sounded very film-like, very cinematic. Um, and when, you, when we mention film music today, mm -hmm. it used to represent romantic music. Mm -hmm. Today, my music is slowly moving away from classical sounds, but still, it still references classical music. Everything that I listen to that inspires me today kind of finds its way into my music now. So when are you going to be finished at Michigan? This is my last uh, semester here. After this May, I'm not sure where I'll end up. I'll be in some doctoral program. I might, I might actually stay in Michigan for the doctoral mm -hmm. program. Are you going to uh, come back for your career, or are you going to stay on the mainland? It, it, it depends. I'd like to end up back in, at home in Hawaii. It really depends on uh, where the, the, the jobs are. I have a feeling you're going to be on the mainland. <laughs> <laughs> and so tell me your thoughts about what role the Hawaii Youth Symphony played in all of this fantastic experience you've had in developing your music? Well, the Hawaii Youth Symphony was a place where the cream of the crop, so the best musicians on the island could come together and play music. My experience with the Youth Symphony wasn't there just to go there to play notes. It was, it was a different level of thinking, especially under the guidance of, of Henry Nimoy. We didn't think we could understand this symphony without attending one of its weekly rehearsals. Here's the rehearsal we attended on March 27th. It was incredible. Three, one, two, one, and two, and one. G. Da 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 da
After the rehearsal, we talked to a group of three of the members of the Youth Symphony. As you'll see, they're completely charming. You guys are friends, huh? Yep. You, you think it's a lifelong thing that you'll always know each other? Yes, it is. Yeah. As long as we Ooh. have Facebook. Didn't take you too long to answer that. Not at all. <laughs> For music, since I was born into a musical family, it was already, I was already in an atmosphere where music is really important to my life. And as time progressed, I came to fall in love with music, and that's why it's my main passion right now, and that's why I want to major in music. Sixth grade, that's when I started playing the trombone, and that was the most difficult thing I ever tried in my life <laughs> till that point. When I first played it, it sounded terrible, and, but then I didn't want to give up for some reason. I wanted to continue until I can play properly, and here I am. Well, I was born into a musical family like Rory, like my mom used or used to play in the Honolulu Symphony. She's play cello. So <clears throat> I started band in sixth grade, started on trumpet, of course. And I just, my mom pushed me to join the Hawaii Youth Symphony in eighth grade. It was a really good experience for me because music, even though I'm not going, majoring in music, it's still a major outlet for me. But when you actually play together and you play right, and you have the emotional satisfaction. And I think oftentimes that's what we search for sometimes. We don't say it, but when we play, we want that emotional satisfaction we get when we play correctly. Mr. Mew Moore has given his whole life in order for us to have this opportunity right now to play underneath him and also to show the music and how it is so important in our lives and why we should have music. We most definitely appreciate his effort. Without him, um, it would be difficult for our, uh, our youth symphony to run. Today's rehearsal was just, it wasn't just like any other rehearsal, because every rehearsal has its own special meaning to it that we learn. We're beginning to express ourselves and the music also. And then, since the concert is coming near, we should already be at this level. And we're proving to him that we can play it, and now he can really drill us on how we can make it even better for the audience than us. <laughs> Emotionally, by being able to play music and going through all the challenges of putting, putting trumpet, trombone, horn, strings, and percussions all together, and you learn to actually harmonize with each other. Some people will not go into music or even play music 
but they know that music exists. So when they think about people that are playing music is they're musicians and they create music. And music is in every person and everybody knows how really touching it can be. I think it's kind of sad that we don't have a professional orchestra anymore because look at every great city. Um, every, pretty much every great city has at least some kind of um, orchestra. And Honolulu, if we don't have something that produces that kind of great music, then can we call ourselves a great city? For the symphony, if they can get back on and if they can entice the audience to come back and also show how music is still required in our lives today and how it can be so fun to attract the, our generation and the generations to come, then they'll become successful once again. My bottom line is my passion for music was born because the power of music was expressed through what I've done, especially through the HYS program. Well, it does not matter where you do music or you pursue business, math, it does not matter. Music, can, music will always be part of our life, no matter where you go. We were delighted to meet these music leaders and orchestra members. They bring such great value, not only in teaching music and orchestral teamwork and enriching their own lives and the lives of their families and friends, but also, of course, in providing the gift of music to our community. What a great experience it was to meet and learn about the Hawaii Youth Symphony. We think every kid could and should participate, and every parent should encourage every kid to participate as well. We need music all around us. We also think it's critically important that the Honolulu Symphony comes back so that they can play again and act as a model and a beacon for these kids. Here's Ken Robbins, leader of the Exploratory Committee that is working to recreate our Honolulu Symphony. Well, the Hawaii Youth Symphony is, to me, um, sort of the breeding ground for youngsters to consider whether they want to go to the next level of um, musical performance. So it's very similar to athletics. It enables those to be able to demonstrate to themselves and to the world, um, people who know something more about the activity than they do, whether they have the intrinsic talent to take it up to the next level. And when youngsters demonstrate that level of interest and talent to the extent that they wish to join forces with their colleagues, whether it's in a youth orchestra or on a, a team, they're doing something that is essential to the human spirit and human soul. Uh, I think the, the, the Hawaii Youth Symphony is an extraordinarily important cultural activity in our community to allow the students to, to judge for themselves and by virtue of feedback that they're receiving, whether they should go beyond that stage in their lives, that level of performance, and go on to uh, a higher calling. And uh, hopefully, as we move along in our activities and putting a symphony together, whether it's going to be the Honolulu Symphony Orchestra, as you called it before, or some other name, <laughs> we, we really haven't decided yet. Okay. But I'm, I'm really hopeful and that we can um, assist in nurturing musicians at that level, at the youth symphony level, um, to reach the point where perhaps they can come and join us. As, as we emerge from the exploratory stage and hopefully get into the actual um, empirical stage of, of creating music, that we can do that sort of thing, that we can bring players from the youth symphony into the orchestra, the professional orchestra, and to sit alongside the professional musicians and to help make music, which will bring their families into wherever it is our venue is going to be to perform music. And uh, what a thrill it'll be for those kids. And, and uh, I'm sure it'll be a wonderful experience for the professional musicians to know that they are providing this thrilling experience for these kids. Um, it, it actually makes the professional musicians better performers as well. Just this evening, the Hawaii Youth Symphony will have played a spectacular concert at the Neil Blaisdell Center. Sorry if you didn't get to see it. You can catch up, of course, by getting to the next Hawaii Youth Symphony concert, or for that matter, to the next concert of the Honolulu Symphony, which we hope will be soon. Check out HaiuSymphony.org for more information. Support orchestral music in Hawaii. A great state deserves it.
And now, here's our ThinkTech calendar of events going forward. On April 28th, ThinkTech, the Hawaii Venture Capital Association, and Pacific New Media at UH will present a luncheon program called Reciprocal Investments Between Hawaii and China. On May 26th, ThinkTech, HVCA, and Pacific New Media will present a luncheon program and an update on legislation in the 2011 legislative session. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of Think Tech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. Thanks to the Scheidler Family Foundation. Jay Scheidler, through the Scheidler Family Foundation, supports a number of educational, cultural, and charitable organizations, including Think Tech. Hawaii Electric Company, Hiko and its affiliates Miko on Maui and Helco on the Big Island, are deeply committed to the communities they serve. Galen Ho. Galen Ho is a senior executive of BAE Systems, a global defense, security, and aerospace company which has a large presence in and commitment to Hawaii. Oceanit, a local tech company, is one of Hawaii's largest and most diversified science and engineering companies. Okay, Duke, that wraps up this week's edition of Think Tech. Remember, you can watch Think Tech on OC16 several times every week, just like Duke does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more ThinkTech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on ThinkTech on OC16, visit thinktechhawaii.com. Be a sponsor and help us reach Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. Thanks for joining us on ThinkTech. And I'm Duke Oishi. Aloha, everyone. Mm -hmm.